It's Bourbon Blog Live, and we're very proud tonight to be talking about a couple of new uh, whiskeys that are limited edition whiskeys from Town Branch Distillery. We're joined by marketing manager Pete Weiss and master distiller Mark Kaufman there from Lexington, Kentucky. Gentlemen joining us uh, from Lexington tonight. How's everything in Lexington? Oh, everything's great. The weather's fantastic. Uh, we couldn't ask for much more. Just get rid of this virus and we'll all be flying around having a great time. <laughs> great plan. Well, we, we appreciate you all letting us uh, try these first. Uh, really two unique whiskeys that I know you all first told me about a while back. And we were so proud to bring everyone the news this week on Bourbon Blog. Um, two really interesting stories. I mean, obviously, we've been enjoying the uh, the, the single malt whiskey that you released uh I believe it was about was it about a year ago you released the the town branch uh single malt just the regular expression of that yeah it was right at the beginning of 2019. right right, so right that's, uh, that's the the seven year age stated uh kentucky single malt right and this one everyone is a uh, is 11 year old it's the the oldest that i know of as far as an american single malt that's ever been released but there's this amazing story about this because it's not aged in a typical barrel. This has a really interesting story behind it. Uh, Mark, tell us, what did you age this in for 11 and a half years? <laughs> we aged that in some Rosa sherry barrels that I came across while I was going through a cooperage in southeastern Kentucky. And uh, as I came across and I asked the gentleman about them, he says, oh, yeah, we just got those 20 barrels in from a winery that was aging red wine in them for two years. I said, well, you, you think you you wouldn't mind to sell them? I said, I, I'd, I'd like to try put a, put some of our single malt and see how it works out. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, we, we we worked a deal out. We filled them up in June of 2010. Uh, we've been watching them the last couple of years and tasting them. And it's just got a real, well, I'm going to grab a bottle. Yeah, of that's all nice. this is, but this it's is really cool. got a fantastic rich nose to it uh you almost get some of those chocolate nibs come right off the bat mm. you, can, you can even smell the full body uh, when, when you put your nose to it yeah but, and, and the color look at the color on this it's dark it's deep it even yeah, has like it's a, a nice rich color. color yeah there's like all kinds of just even in the uh, through the bottle i was looking at the bottle i'm like this does not look like the typical whiskey again cast strength at as this 100 around 110 proof yeah, this is um, of course it. While we know it's cast strength, the 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 beautiful sweetness in this, the the complex age of this, it does not feel like a hundred and ten proof, does it? No, no. You you get up the nice, uh, rich, thick uh, chocolate and raspberry flavors coming off of this. Right. It, it's just a a beautiful sipper. Uh, you just sit there and sip this on a nice evening right by a fireplace. And it's it's very limited. It's going to be in markets uh, like this week, right, Pete? Yeah. So uh, we shipped it to distributors this week. So um, should start seeing it uh, hit store shelves next week. It's a, it's an allocated piece across our, uh, our our entire whiskey footprint. It is uh, about so a little over three thousand bottles. Correct. So extremely rare. Really, I mean, how I was we were saying earlier, being eleven and a half years old. Uh, Little, I mean, obviously a lot older than most single malts. Did you have much whiskey left when you take took it out of the barrel? I mean, did you have what did it yield as far as uh, we were getting close to 45 50 percent of the, the original barrel? Now, these are 63 gallon casks, so and then we were probably getting close to that 30 30 33 uh, gallon range, right in that range. Excellent, and I see a lot of great folks jumping on to Bourbon Blog. Uh, you are watching bourbonblog.com live and make sure you like this video, share it, retweet it. Uh, it is the first time we were really tasting this one and um, and ask us questions because I see a lot of uh, Town Branch fans jumping on there. Uh, hopefully a lot of you have tried that uh, that single malt expression. Again, if for some, I mean, hopefully you can find this one. If for some reason you don't find it, uh, that the single malt I just I love the single malt. Uh, is it's incredible. It's seven years old, right? The original single malt is. Yeah, what we have on the shelves right now is our seven year old, and uh, hopefully uh, soon you'll see some uh, twelve and maybe thirteen year old coming out pretty soon as single malt. Wow, but but as far as, as single malts go, this is really your first 
besides the original expression, this is your first unique kind of limited expression. You've done it as at as as a distillery. Is that right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. This one we we sat down in June of uh, ten to see how this would work out, and we're really quite pleased with the results on this. Yeah, you said you said berries, chocolate. I mean, that's one of the things I got on this right away was the uh, uh, almost like chocolate covered, like a cho chocolate raspberry truffle or chocolate berry truffle, and then at the end, uh, the the linger is serious on this because again, usually when it comes to any kind of sherry barrel, wine barrel. It's usually done as a finish. What really inspired you then to actually say, hey, we're going to age it the whole life in this? I mean, that's something I see very rarely happening. Well, well, well I think what it gave an interesting characteristic to it was the red wine, because we've done some sherry aged uh, bourbons, and, and that, that's been a year or shorter. And it comes out fine, but, but sometimes yeah. it's a pretty strong uh, sherry influence. Uh, this one here, I was tasting it after five years, and I was just impressed how it was coming on. And then, then right after ten years, I said, "Well, we're getting close to age on this, and uh, really would like to see us get some yield out of it versus the angel share." So uh, we got with Pete, and uh, we worked up a label and got everything rolling on this, so we can get it out this this winter for the holidays. Excellent! Uh, what a great holiday gift for someone that that enjoys. Uh, limited edition whiskeys that enjoy something cast strength, really something different. I mean, there's a, a nice complexity of uh, both the umami on this, but also the sweetness. Um, I love the sweetness, but it is really balanced nicely between that single malt nature and the sweetness without feeling too heavy. Yeah. And you know, Tom, I'm I'm such a bourbon fan. I mean, I'm a diehard bourbon guy. So the malt whiskeys has always been a... Uh, a new world for me and this just blends those two flavor profiles so perfectly because you're getting those big deep rich notes that you get on uh, on uh some of these rare bourbons out there. but uh being a malt whiskey it just has a unique finish that uh that can't be matched no you're absolutely right it really does blend those two together and uh really i mean nowadays it used to be we would see whiskeys at 11 years old uh, more often, but this is something, any kind of whiskey, especially American whiskey, we don't see a ton of 11 year old plus whiskey. Uh, this is uh, extremely interesting. And and the price point on this is? $79.99 on the shelf. Very nice, very nice. I know, it, I know these will go quickly as people see these. Uh, it is really delicious. Uh, I can think that it would be amazing, but it is amazing by itself, but I could think of, uh, other great pairings, pairings with chocolate because it already has that chocolate note on it. Cheeses. Uh, I know we all, all three of us enjoy a good cigar every now and then. I imagine this would be a really nice pairing for a cigar. Oh, yeah. No, I, I can see a nice, juicy, full body cigar with this one, Tom. Yes. Yes. This is uh, something very special. And uh, and right now in, in your warehouses, I mean, you were saying that this is pretty old, but do you, you have some other old single malt whiskey? Yeah, yeah, we got some single malt. We started setting our single malts down September first, uh, two thousand and eight. Wow. So we still have we still have a good number of those barrels still available. Uh, Pete, Pete, I'm sure is going to come up with some good scheme to have a nice release coming on for a th 12, 13, or fourteen year old single malt shortly. Wow. So that would we be seeing that before the next? Or will that maybe be one of the next limited edition releases? We're hoping so. Uh, Mark's got to tell us what the flavor is going to be like, and if he's uh, if he's ready to pull it out of the barrel, we'll uh, we'll put it in a bottle. I'll tell you that. Um, I'm excited to taste some of that old stuff. I, I've I've been hearing rumors. Uh, you know, I've been with the company for eight years now, and I've been hearing rumors about all this uh, uh, old stock whiskey that we got stashed away somewhere. So I can't wait to see that come down the pipe. <laughs> that's that is really that's something to really look forward to pete and mark if this if this is tasting this good obviously at 11 years old what what's it tasting like at in the, in the teens i mean what are what are, what are 12 13 what is it tasting like well we are using a second generation or a third generation barrels uh that that's uh critical to, to, to know that so we're not getting those heavy extracts from the wood itself um but uh, all of all of our malts that we typically age will go from uh, you know uh, uh, a bourbon, 
But once the bourbon's dumped out, we'll put our whisk, our beer into it, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale, and age that for six weeks. Then if we're on a malt run, a big campaign of making malt, then we'll take that out, rinse the beer out, then put the, the distillate right into that. So um, it, it, it's, it's had some of those extracts taken out, so you're going to get more of that true malty flavor. But I think what, what really sets us aside is just having that great Kentucky weather, the great Kentucky uh, water, uh, just having those seasons that you really get that expression of the wood or the liquid going in and out of the wood. I, I, you really have to appreciate that. Um, where you're not going to get those heavy oak and you know, vanilla notes, but you'll you'll still get some of that malt characteristic that you're looking for on a single malt. Absolutely, and um, and you all. I mean, we've we've seen we've seen a lot of distilleries, or a number of them, the last few years uh, doing single malt style whiskeys in America. But do you all really uh, recognize that to be something important? Many many years before. Uh, Many distilleries did while everyone else was, and you all were making bourbon too, but while people were talking about bourbon and rye, you all were really ahead of the game on single malts, laying down whiskey to someday release it at an older age. What what made you choose single malt years ago? Well, that, that was easy. Uh, we're owned by an Irishman. <laughs> and uh, he grew up in working at, at some of the distilleries and the breweries in, in the Dublin area. You know, I think his first job, Pierce Lines, I'm talking about, Dr. Pierce Lines. When he, we finished college, he went to work for uh, Jameson's. And he worked in their laboratory there, and he helped with some of their uh, modifications and, ex and uh, expansions in the early 70s. But when he transferred uh, to Kentucky, uh, and he came to Kentucky specifically because he liked the green rolling pastures, and it reminded him a lot of Ireland. Right. And, uh, of course, he fell in love with uh, the distilleries there in uh, Kentucky. And then, story, you know, I, I've been with the company for almost 35 years now. Wow. And uh, Pierce never never took a day off, but he had a lot of fun. And uh, I can remember a call I got in October, Sunday afternoon, and he asked me to come down and take a look at the Lexington Brewing Company. They're going to close their doors in a week and we might might have some equipment there we could buy from them uh, well without getting into that story and everything we ended up buying the brewery and that was the first of one of his uh, dreams that he wanted to have a brewery but he also wanted to have a distillery so if you step forward and back into 2008 in february on another sunday afternoon he gives me a call and he says mark i'm thinking about putting in the distillery down at the brewery yeah, I'm a practical thinker, and I know the brewery didn't have a whole lot of square footage. And I said, well, Pierce, where are we going to put this? And he says, that's tomorrow's problem. Let's just, just see if we can get this worked out. <clears throat> and he happened to be in Scotland, and he just got done meeting up with Richard Forsythe. And Forsythe, of course, they make probably about 80% of the copper stills in Europe. And there's a good lot of them that they have around the United States, too. And uh, we have, have a great customer and a, a great partner there with Vendome in Louisville, but, but everyone was running about 18 months delivery at that time. So Richard calls me the next morning and says, hey, I had talked to Pierce yesterday to want me to shoot, get with you and shoot you a price. And he says, well, I, I was telling him that, you know, it's going to run about 18, 20 months on delivery. But I got into the shop this morning and I was talking to the lads and they said, you know, Richard, we got these two stills outside. You know, such and such hasn't paid up on a nine months. You know, we could do whatever we want to. And uh, there's a pause. I said, well, Richard, what does that mean? He says, well, Mark, I says, I'll get you the details. I'll send you a contract, and uh, uh, we'll work out a down payment. that We can get working on this, and uh, you guys can have them. So sure enough, that afternoon, we wired him money. Everything looked like we could, we could uh, fit it into our operation. And... Uh, we received those in May of 2008. Well, we we're waiting for those coming. We we're doing all the construction, getting everything set up. And uh, interesting little plug here for from one of our friends down in Memphis, Ms. Alex, uh, that she was one of the. I think you've talked with Alex before. Yeah, I have. Yeah, she's a great girl, a yeah. great lady now. She was a girl back then, but she <laughs> was an intern for us, and she was she was working on that project specifically. 
so we can get the, these stills put up and installed. And we were operating September 1st, 2008. That's how we got into the whiskey business. So two weeks before operation, I said to Pierce, I said, you know, we're getting ready to start up in a couple of weeks. I imagine you want, want me to go ahead and start setting everything for production for bourbon. He said, oh, no, I'm Irish. I want some single malt whiskey. <laughs> well, we started. <laughs> That's that's what an incredible story, and and we really uh, appreciate everything Pierce did, and um, and has how his legacy lives on. And this it's amazing to think this whiskey laid down so many years ago, back when there were some uh, American single malts, not many, but back when bourbon and rye were the thing. And just to see how you all have grown with with your whiskeys, and then these coming of age, um, and you waited a while to release e even the first one. These. You wanted to make sure they were they were perfect at that uh, seven year mark. Uh, a lot of a lot of distilleries would have released it beforehand, but you all really wanted to make sure you you liked what you were tasting in the in the bottle. Yeah. Now we're really happy how it turned out, and we would stay very uh, close to how the Irish and the, the Scots would make it. So it, it's very true to form. Yeah. Yeah, it's delicious stuff. This one, uh, very special, extremely limited, uh, and probably something that, uh, again, I've never had anything quite like this, aged completely in an X wine cast. Uh, lots of flavors just, just bouncing all around the palate and uh, really a special whiskey. Another special whiskey that uh, is, is shipping out this week is one that is uh, double oaked. And this one is actually a bourbon. And of course, we... We really love your, 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 of course, the original release of your bourbon, but this one, uh, this one has been through two barrels. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is a really smooth, uh, bourbon. Um, uh, it, it really comes, I get the taste on it. I get right off the bat is like a caramelized oak. Yeah. Uh, it just has all those natural sugars just come in there real nice. And what's the interesting taste in between the single malt and this one is that this one here actually cools your mouth off. Uh, and it goes in very smooth and stays very smooth all the way right through the palate. Yeah. You think that you think you almost get a cooling mouthfeel on that then? Yeah. Yes, I agree. It it has it has some nice rich complexities, but it does have that really smooth cooling feel and um Again, this was a five-year-old bourbon that went into a, it was the same type of cask. Just basically yeah, same, same cask. they were all number four chars. Uh, we took it out after five years and uh, put them back into a, a freshly charred barrel, aged it for another year. Wow. So and right I was really another year. happy with how the, the smoothness came out on this and, and the rich flavors. Uh, it's not overwhelming by any means. It, it's not hitting you with a heavy extract, but it's very smooth, very, very uh, cool to the taste. What's those those flavors that we love on your bourbon, but it's just that extra elevation. It really takes it just that big of a step forward. Um, again, once you empty it from that first bourbon barrel after five years, you're putting it right back into the same kind of barrel, but brand new. So that what's that char doing as it hits that whiskey? Oh, it's just it's just taking out any of those other elements, those, those uh, harsher harsher characteristics that you'd have on a five year bourbon. Yeah. Uh, it, it just kind of smoothed it out really nice. Uh, I mean, it's just I just can't say it. Just very smooth and cool to the taste. Yeah, and it tastes. I mean, I get though it is a little well. What would it be? Six years total, I guess, in two casks. I think it almost has a, a much older flavor because of that second cask. I mean, I think we're, what would you guess it to be, Pete? If you didn't know how old it was, what would you guess it to be? Well, that's what I was going to say is, is that second cask gives it that, uh, that deep oak sweetness, a mm. uh, little bit of, a little bit of oak char on there and, and really gives it that much older profile, um, you know, almost 10 years plus on that uh, in, in terms of, of the flavor profile. So, um, really like the way that it, it's it's easy drinking. Mark said it right. It, it it's a cooling mouthfeel on this one. Yeah, it is. I like that. Uh, I like I like it a lot. I like both of these. They're both coming this week to it. it most every state that gets your whiskeys are gonna they're gonna have some of these, right? Yes, in an allocated uh, way. I think this one has uh, 
uh, the double oak is um, about a hundred less cases uh, was with the yield there. Right on. So double oaked and the um, the Kentucky single malt cask strength whiskey and uh, may also, as as you uh, hinted at, may also be seeing some other um, other interesting whiskey projects. Anything that you're playing with as far as barrelings go or ages go, Mark, that you that you might be able to tell us about. We always have a little bit of something going on to see what really comes out. I uh, really can't discuss much, much of what those options are just yet until we start uh, getting some age on things and tasting them out. And, uh, and of course, uh, for now, we're, obviously, we're very happy with these, but we know we'll have a whole lot more to look forward to. I know there were a lot of fans, and I was one of them, of the um, of the Sherry Barrel finished uh, bourbon a couple of years ago. Is that one we may see more of in the, in the near future or at some point in the future as well? I'd say we'll give that a couple of years and resurrect it again. That one was a, a very good one. It re, it really sold well, and uh, we're getting a lot of and uh, meeting with a, a group of uh, uh, bourbon people from New Orleans a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Pete was with me too, and I think Pete left before we shared some shots of that again. We we had a bottle of that and. Uh, uh, it, it went around the second time really good. So I think we'll probably resurrect that one again. Yes. I thought it was uh, really, really nice. Uh, someone is asking where they can find town branch. Is that on your all's website? Is that a, is there a list of, of places? Yeah. If you go to our uh, website, which is Lexington brewing uh, that uh, there's a product finder on there. And if you type in your zip code, you'll be able to uh, track down where you can find our, our standard town branch bourbon, as well as any of the other products that we put out. So beer and spirits are, are listed there. So all the places that, uh, that are, and I'm going to put that link up so that everyone can see it again, lexingtonbrewingco.com. That's the place to go to learn uh, of where to find these. And of course, you all do some uh, incredible beer too. I mean, we love whiskey, but we really enjoy your beers. Are there any new uh, beers we're going to see out during the the autumn or during the holidays that uh, we might want to highlight? So yeah, we've actually got uh, two seasonals out right now. One is uh, Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale, which is a, mm. a pumpkin ale that we aged in uh, freshly decanted bourbon barrels. So. Uh, we get barrels not only from uh, Mark over at the distillery there for when he's done with the uh, with the bourbon, but we also get barrels from some of the other distilleries on the on the bourbon trail, and yeah. um, and we'll age our beer in it. So pumpkin barrel is out right now, and then we just released our uh, holiday beer, which is a peppermint porter. So it is a, uh, a, a peppermint porter that we actually have been aging for almost uh, almost 13 months before it went into the bottle. So uh, it's got great bourbon flavors. I mean, it, it tastes like a, a thin mint cookie in a glass. So you order, right? What's that? Barrel. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's so you put the porter in a, bur a used bourbon barrel. Yes. For about you said about a year or so. Yeah, just over a year when it came out of the barrels. All right, and then how do how do you how do you put those peppermints in there? <laughs> the trade secret. <laughs> the el the elves help out. That's exactly right. In the pocket. That does sound nice. I, I I'm thinking about the bourbon, the mint, a lot of a lot of different layers there. That's uh, that sounds good, and I always enjoy the that pumpkin that's been aged in a barrel too. That's uh, that is delicious stuff as well. Yeah, so we perfect. used uh, Kentucky pumpkin butter in that. So uh, I mean, just like you would have in a pumpkin pie. Um, oh. We don't use actual gourd, so it uh, it's it's you know, got that pumpkin spice with just a hint of the pumpkin flavor in there. So it's Kentucky. What is Kentucky pumpkin butter? <laughs> so pumpkin butter. Have you ever had apple butter? It's basically the same yeah. thing, but yeah. uh, it, it's basically the same like thing that. there, but uh, same consistency. But they use pumpkin instead of apple, and then uh, all of those pumpkin spices, cinnamon, nutmeg. Uh, wow. all of those good baking spices. It's, it sounds it sounds amazing. It sounds really good. All, all good Kentucky pumpkins in there. Um, One of these I'm trying these things. both. I really, I, I love both of these whiskeys. Just thinking about the um, Kentucky single malt whiskey and really, again, as we mentioned, I'm seeing, uh, you know, a number of distilleries, you know, release, and, you know, some other good products too, you know, some obviously younger because you all have such old uh, and really delicious single malt American whiskey, but 
as far as the category as a whole, where do you see this category going? I really have seen a lot more people getting into this category. What do you all see for the category of uh, American single malt? Well, I, I think that the commissions, you know, we're part of that the same uh, single malt whiskey yeah. commission is, is, is trying to get the, the, the regulations changed to, ha to have this classification. Uh, it's, it's a, it's truly an American single malt and we need to get that characteristic out there. Just, just like we do with bourbon and like, like we do with rye. Uh, it, it's, it, it's really kind of critical to, to get that. And, uh, I think once we're able to get that, you're going to get a designated shelf space, put in all the, the retail outlets. And uh, it, it'll have its own uh, classification at that time. Right now, we, we find it gets lost too much in into the mix of general whiskeys. Uh, right. It doesn't really fall into an Irish whiskey. It doesn't fall into a Scotch. So it's kind of lost in many aspects. Uh, but we're fortunate that we, we can have this uh, marketed and, and laid on the shelf with, with all of our, our products. Because our if you notice, our, our bottling uh uh, design is, is all similar, so uh, you'll have our bourbon, our rye, and our malt, and it'll it'll look very distinctive, and it's it's that's a part of our trade, our trade. Yeah, and and but the de but the definition for that category, they're still working out. Is that right? Yeah, it's a long process when you're dealing right. with the federal government and TTB. I mean, but they go back and forth for months and. I'll ask some questions and you go back and forth for months. Uh, it's just a long drawn out process. Right. Well, and, and uh, this is, this is amazing. The more I taste it, I just, I get these different peaks of flavor, these different arcs, the fruit, the chocolate, uh, so many things happening. Uh, I think it's one of those that it, when you sit with it, you taste it, it just continues to, to grow and to open up on the palate. Um, you all have done a great job with both of these whiskeys they both have a lot of complexity and we're going to talk about one more spirit here in just a moment but i want to let everyone know if you did somehow join us midstream these videos twitter facebook youtube are always up permanently so you can go back and watch it or you can listen to the audio on our podcast channel if you're not already subscribed there is the link on anchor fm uh we appreciate or wherever you're listening to podcasts spotify apple Pre appreciate you subscribing to our podcasts because we like to uh we like to put a little whiskey music in your ears. And by music, I just mean us sipping and talking about it because this is great stuff to talk about on a Wednesday night. This is one of the best, probably one of the best Wednesdays I've had for a while because we're uh, we're tasting something so limited and so special. Uh, it's just so you were talking about the, the single malt category and yeah. I think a big thing um, in the whiskey trends right now is is the consumers are getting more in tune with what distilleries are doing and, and you know, asking about mash bills and, and talking about, you know, the different grains and aging processes and finishes and things like that. And I think the, the whiskey consumers are, are getting more experimental, um, willing to try new things and, and unique aging processes and all those sorts of things. So um, I, I think that, you know, in the future, as we move forward, there will be a blending of whiskey types. It won't just be, you know, bourbon that people are seeking their their those flavor profiles will expand uh with the consumer's palate you think you think you'll see a category that's more blended of between maybe a single malt a bourbon a rye category mixing several things as a uh here's our distilleries blended or maybe even cross different distilleries is that what you're absolutely there's some distilleries out there that are, are are blending whiskey styles and and getting excellent ratings on them and i think that uh you know, there will still be the, the buckets of, of bourbon and single malt and scotch and Irish whiskey. But uh, I, I think the consumers are looking for unique flavor profiles like this uh, specific single malt here. I agree. I agree. I think that's so important. That, that blending category, I think, is something that, that will grow and will allow us to dive deeper into being able to dissect those uh, those different flavors. Um well said. Well said. And I look forward to see. It sounds like maybe Town Branch has even thought about this a little bit. <laughs> Potentially, they might. They might have uh, thought about doing it. So again, it's this one: the uh, the whiskey cast strength, um, aged for eleven and a half years or so, completely in those X wine barrels, and also this Town Branch Double Oak. You're gonna be looking for. What's the What's the price point on this one? Uh, that one is forty nine ninety nine. 
both delicious whiskeys. If you see both of these, pick both of these up. These are both incredible. I'll tell you one other one. Uh, not a whiskey, but we've been talking about it for a while because, Pete, when you first told me about it, I just thought it sounded so dynamite. And uh, so many whiskey fans I'm finding, um, whether it's in the winter or spring, they all year long really enjoy it, whether it's a good gin and tonic, a good gin cocktail. But uh, this one, tell us about this uh, special rhubarb gin. So this is actually made at our sister distillery over in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Pierce Lines Distillery. Uh, it's right there in the Liberties. It's a it's a beautiful uh, old church that has been uh, redone uh, immaculately by by Mrs. Lyons, Doctor Doctor Pierce Lyons' wife. Um, and uh, they installed some stills in there. And this gin is a product that was developed when they wanted something new and different and unique and uh, they came across a, a, a batch of rhubarb juice, and instead of cutting the gin with water, they cut it with fresh pressed rhubarb juice. So that's what gives it that pink hue. Um, like it, it. it's, a, it's a beautiful, sweet, and floral gin, and uh, it, it goes amazing with just a, uh, a, a splash of tonic and a squeeze of lemon, actually, is, is the best serve for that one. And it's the is it is it Haypenny Hoppenny? How do we say this? Yes, Haypenny. Haypenny, you said it right. So it's named after the Haypenny Bridge in Dublin, which used to cost a uh, half a penny or Haypenny to get across back in the day. Cost a half a penny. So it is the rhubarb gin uh, made there at the uh, the distillery, which we saw the beginnings of a couple years ago, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing some amazing things there, making gins, uh, making some other things there as well. Yeah, I think Mark actually uh, uh, fired those stills up for the first time and and made some Irish whiskey over there and and blended the first batches of our stuff and and uh, uh, some other extra age stuff that we have. Yeah, we uh, started that up in uh, 2012, Tom. And uh, of course, we had partnered up with a brewery and uh, distilled at that location until we were finished up uh, doing all the remodeling and uh work at the church there on uh st james's street and by the way those those stills were random in louisville we shipped over to ireland yes no this is that, that's that's incredible so you actually shipped the the vendome stills to ireland yeah mm -hmm. excellent so, so we, spread, we spread, it, spread it around a little bit spread, yeah, that's right no, it's it's really a it's a lovely gin. It's uh, just that little touch of rhubarb. Um, I've had a, a lot of gins I really like, but this one's really special because of that little flavor. Um, this one is in a number of markets in the U.S. too. Yeah, absolutely. That um, that's a big gin for us here in the U.S. and and you can find it across our footprint. Um, same uh, same website. If you go to lexnewbrewingco.com uh, and type in the product finder, it'll it'll bring those locations up too. All right, we'll put that uh, website up there once again, LexingtonBrewingCo.com. Um, what? Anything else happening with the distillery? You all are. I, I know that you are. You guys open for just 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 gift shop. What's it look like right now? Well, right now we are uh, we're closed to the public. Um, right. I'm sure Mark can uh, can attest to this, but we have such small spaces, um, right. Right. and to, to keep production going and to keep our staff safe and and keep. Sure our customers safe. We just thought it would be better to uh, stick with production at the, for the time being, but uh, I'm extremely busy with our, our single barrel program. Um, we've had some great single barrels going out over the past uh, past few months, even uh, upwards of 10 years old at times. So um, wow. he's busy pulling samples and making sure uh, we're getting the best barrels out to our customers out there. So um, that's a retail program. I know there's some, some whiskey clubs getting some barrels too. So uh, it, it's a fun project to, to watch from, uh, from a distance. I don't know how Mark finds the time to taste all that whiskey, though. <laughs> how, how do you do that, Mark? Well, I'm not meeting a whole lot of people in public, so it frees up a lot of time to, to focus on the single barrel. You know, we're really, going, we're really looking to expand that quite a bit more this next year. That's exciting. And, and again, if anyone wants to learn, I know there are um, – Number of whiskey clubs, retailers, uh, bars that that watch this uh, Bourbon Blog Live. If anybody wants to learn about Single Barrel Program, how do they? How do they? Who do they contact? What do they do? Uh, shoot us an email to uh, KentuckyAle at alltech.com. Um, 
you know, there's a whiskey club out there. I know Mark's done uh, a few of them. We just uh, had the New Orleans Bourbon Festival folks come in and uh, and and do a tasting. So it, that was a fun fun group of guys. So they can they can uh, you can send the whiskey to them, or they can come and actually do the program with you guys. Well, right now we're we're only doing it on a send only basis. Send only. Uh, so hopefully things will get straight away on this virus soon in the next few months, and then we'll start opening up the doors again. Absolutely. And so there's that e email address, KentuckyAle at Alltech.com. Uh, and that if you have any interest in uh, in doing a single barrel pick, um, reach out there. The single barrels are delicious. I've had some of them. They're really amazing. And they are up to about how old? You said about over 10 sometimes. Uh, on a rare yeah, we've had, we've got, I think we've got a lot on those now, but we've got a series of four, five, six, and seven year old right now. Some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mark, what are those proofs coming in at these days? I think uh, low yeah, hundreds. They've been right around 110 and seen some up to 125. And so we're barreling all, or we're bottling all this at uh, at barrel. Incredible. No, there's there's some such, well, obviously just the bourbon itself, uh, the single malt, great whiskeys, but those single barrels, I've had many of them, they're, they are delicious. So if you're looking for a, a really unique single barrel for your uh, for your retail shop, for your bar, reach out to those folks there, Kentucky Ale at alltech.com. Uh, what, what a fun pleasure to, to spend with, uh, spend some time with you guys, Pete and Mark, uh, couple of my favorite guys in the industry and always enjoy trying new whiskeys with you again shipping out this week will they be seeing them by next week you think in those markets Pete when will they be seeing them in those all those markets yeah they'll they'll start trickling out into the market uh, next week um, you know I'm not sure how uh, how quick the retailers will get them on the shelf I'm hoping uh, it's November so it's about uh, holiday shopping time so we're hoping that uh, that people see these as great gifts for uh, for loved ones. Excellent. These are both great gifts. Again, that whiskey, uh, Kentucky single malt whiskey cast strength in those X wine barrels at uh, barrel proof and also the new town branch double oaked, both very limited. Look for those. And uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. We'll be back with Bourbon Blog Live this Saturday night for Cigar Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, keep on checking that link out. We'll always have the newest video coming up to let you know who we're interviewing next. Mark, Pete, hopefully we will see you uh, gentlemen real soon. It's great to see you on camera and have some whiskey with you. Congratulations on these releases. They're all, they're all delicious. Well, thanks, Tom. It was good to meet up with you again. You all Cheers. too. Thank you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Thank you guys.